Your ears are very important to us. Please hold on and our program will begin shortly. The Soundcheck Podcast is coming up. Please continue to hold. up with the Soundcheck podcast and everything that's happening in the New Sounds empire, just go to newsounds.org and follow us on social media. All of the icons are in the top right corner of the page. From newsounds.org, welcome to another of the Soundcheck Podcasts, our series of live in-studio performances. I'm John Schaefer. Pianist and composer Harold Lopez Nusa is from Havana, and his music is full of the sounds of Cuban and specifically Afro-Cuban music. Now, he leads what looks like a standard jazz trio, piano, bass, and drums, but the sound covers a lot of ground. He released his first album during the Obama administration when travel and cultural restrictions between the United States and Cuba had been loosened. His new album, called Un Dia Cualquiera, has come out under a very different set of circumstances. But it sets up the prospect of music being something that can cross borders. And as if to prove the point, Harold and his trio are here with us in our New York studio to play some of this music, beginning with a piece called El Igua.
That is called El Agua. It was written and played by Harold Lopez Nusa, who is at our piano. His brother Rui Lopez Nusa is behind our drum kit, and Gaston Hoya playing his own double bass. They brought that instrument. <laughs> Harold, to you and the rest of the trio, uh, thank you for joining us today. Oh, thanks to you. It's a huge pleasure to be here. So El Agua is one of the Orishas in, in the, you know, in the in Yoruba, the Yoruba uh, religion. religion. Yeah. And he is the god of roads. Yeah. Of roads and, and your, your first record was called El Viaje, The Journey. Yeah. So <laughs> it seems like there's a little bit of a theme here. I mean, do you see your, your musical career as a, a journey, as a, a road leading you oh, somewhere? Yeah, definitely. And I'm not a religious, a religious person, but um, I like uh, every Cuban, uh, we have this tradition of a Yoruba religion. And Elegua is, is the god that when there is a ceremony, a religious ceremony for Yoruba, uh, they, they, they sing for every god. And the first one is always Elegua. Right. So, so when a Santeria, yeah, when um, a Santeria is, ritual yeah. begins, there's always, always an invocation yeah, to, yeah, Elegua. to Elegua. Because he opened the way to the other right. things. So, yeah. so did you grow up with that music? Oh, definitely. Um, I was born in Centro Habana, which is... Uh, one of the more folkloric part of Havana. Um, over there, there were like a one or two a weeks, some, some you know, uh, party for Santeria or mm -hmm. ceremony, mm -hmm. um, rumba. I'm, I'm just just in, in my in the other, um, I um, where in my neighborhood, rumba over there. Yeah, uh, yeah. music on the radio. So Santeria in the neighborhood houses so a lot a lot a lot of these uh, are in, in in my life yeah. and, and so uh so some of the rhythms in that piece uh, are, are they kind of referring back oh they came they came from the the yeah. the toque de legua so the the bata drums used to do like that's what i'm trying to do with my left hand right and then there is a singing for a who, who do like it. So we are trying to re replace, replace this melody also. So, yeah. Right. So well, I mean, uh, you we know, that's, from there. Yeah. that's how a lot of the world's classical music happened was by <laughs> yes. taking singing and replacing it with instruments. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> now... It seems like some of the pieces on the album have an almost classical, almost like a chamber music sens sensibility to them. Have you studied that music as oh, well? Oh, yeah, the three of us. We, the three of us, we study in Cuba classical music. That's what, uh, what we learn in the school in Cuba. It's just like classical training, like right. European composer, Bach, Beethoven, Chopin, Stravinsky, uh, Liszt, all those kind of mus musicians and composer. And of course, we have this influence in, mm -hmm. in our right. way to play. So yeah, in some of the pieces, you can you can feel this this influence definitely. A and and jazz is I mean, there's such a long history of Cuban jazz musicians. Of course, but most of them have been here in yeah. the United yeah, States. Yeah, of course, and here in New York. Right. So right. yeah, there's a lot of history behind us, and we are taking from there and learning from there and trying to put our own. Um, for example, it's, it's very good to have a bass player like Gaston Hoya, who has been playing with Chucho Valdez for a long time, who is one of the greatest a great pianists pianist yeah, yeah. Um, and jazz player from Cuba. So he has this experience and he take it with us. Uh -huh. So yeah, we take and it from everywhere. And there's also a track on the new record which is dedicated to Chucho's dad. Oh yeah, Bebo, Bebo Valdez. Valdez, who inspired me a lot. He, he's way, he weighed his way to play the piano for me was incredible. Um, when when I first hear hear Bebo playing, I just fell in love with his touch, with his sound, with his way to build the melodies. So uh, in Cuba, when you when the three of you were studying and you're yeah. studying classical music yeah. and you're hearing jazz and you're hearing the the Santeria music and you're trying to incorporate that, is that is that frowned upon? Did your teachers? encourage you when you started doing oh that? some of them no all of them it's it's kind of it's kind of for her a uh, classical musician to but you know cuba have a lot of history about afro-cuban music yeah. popular music so it's it's hard to be aware of that but but some point some teachers they 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 don't they don't want you to go this way mm -hmm. i remember that i was 
I, when I was trying to to a little play jazz and learn from Afro Cuban music and popular Cuban music, some of my teachers they they didn't like this this idea too much. They want me to keep playing like classical piano. Right. But uh, I I I, ha I had at that point I had a lot of support from my family friends mm. and and I remember they used to play with Gaston in school and of course with my brother at home. Right. Uh, so yeah have those friends and have I, I came from a musical family so they they give me a lot of support in that in that way so thanks to them i'm i'm here today all right <laughs> harold lopez nusa is here with his trio the uh, the latest album is called un dia cualquiera which means just another just day just another yeah. day <laughs> uh now the piece you're going to play for us next the preludio this preludio. this work really does have a very classical oh, sound. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Gaston does a little uh, arco, a little mm. bowing. Oh, yeah, yeah, in the recording, yeah. yeah in the recording. Yeah. We'll see what happens here <laughs> yeah. in a live okay. setting. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> uh, it's Harold Lopez Nusa and his trio playing live on this edition of the Soundcheck Podcast.
That's lovely. From uh, Harold Lopez Nusa and his trio here in our New York studio, a piece called Preludio. On the record, Harold, it's called uh, Preludio to Jose Juan. Who is that? Oh, he was a very good friend of my family, a very good friend of Cuba. He was uh, from Spain. Um, unfortunately, he passed away last last year during during just during our recording. So uh. we decided to dedicate uh, the song to him. Yeah. Now, you mentioned that your family is a musical family. Yes. Yeah. What kind of music? Were they doing things like <laughs> this? <or? laughs> well, yeah, my, my mom, she was um, a piano teacher. Um, my father, he played drums. He's a drummer. He played mostly jazz, Cuban music, mm. even rock and pop over there in Cuba. And my uncle, he's kind of famous jazz piano player in Cuba, Hernan Lopez Nusa. So yeah, we grew up with all of these. Even my grandmother, she she was a very good piano player. She she was not a professional, but she was a great piano player. So yeah, I grew up with that in my ho- house. I remember we we go up in a little apartment in Central Havana, and we have in the dining room the piano of my mother, table for for eat, <laughs> and in the kind of mezzanini, the drum of my father on the bed of my father and my mother. So yeah, music everywhere. <laughs> my f- the friends of my father coming in and playing with him, the student of my mother. So yeah, we mm-hmm. we grow like that. So th- the bed and the drum kit, yeah. the, the the dining room table, <laughs> yeah. the piano, it's all everything. <laughs> yeah, it was a really small apartment, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, it seems. I mean, it's funny how music runs in the family in in. Cuba yeah. in the Cuban tradition. Yeah. You know, we mentioned Bebo Valdez yeah, and Chucho Bebo Valdez. Valdez. Chucho's son is a yeah, he's is, a piano is, player, great piano player, playing play. Chuchito, yeah. yeah and and definitely. here in the states, you know, Chico O'Farrell, of course, and then uh, Arturo, yeah, Arturo O'Farrell, O'Farrell. Yeah. and now his son Adam O'Farrell yeah. plays the trumpet. Yeah, you know, I know. I mean, the la, the family Romeo in Cuba, they were amazing. Lopez Gavilan, I don't. know, There is a lot of yeah families in Cuba. Yeah, yeah. Now is Th- there are a couple of uh, French titles in your in your <laughs> songbook. So is there is there a European connection in well, the family? Yeah, I have a connection, very special connection with France, with which was the country of my grandmother. She was from there. Um, my father, he had French nationality as well as as uh, we, my my brother and I. Um, and this is a country that I really like, and I have been there so many times. Uh, so I feel I, th- I feel really something special with France. Hmm. So yeah, I speak a little bit of French. So yeah. That's so why. you you and Rui are both dual citizens of yeah. Cuba and France. Yeah. Now, where do you live? In Cuba. I okay. Live in Cuba. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, um, I, I've never been to Havana. Many Americans haven't. But whenever I see pictures, Havana seems to be a a, a city. Uh, stopped in time. <laughs> <laughs> kind of that. You yes. look at all of the cars on the street, and they're all like American cars from 1955. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know how they're still running, but I either. <laughs> um, so you know this idea that you know, in yeah. large part because of the American embargo, that yeah. that Cuba has not just been. And a physical island, but kind of a cultural island as well. Yeah, you know that seem yeah. that you get that idea from seeing these pictures no, of these true. old cars on the oh. street. <laughs> but it seems like musically, things have happened, and and there has been a lot of musical development. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely musicians they 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 keep away what what is happening here, what is happening in the world, and, and we try to keep our mind over there and keep looking all the time, and we have. A huge influence from the states, from you know films, uh, music, albums, uh, mm-hmm. from jazz, of course. All, all the the guys in the school they listen a lot of American uh, CDs, even when you can't find that in Cuba. But <laughs> yeah. we, we have the way. I don't know. You have ways. Yeah, yes. we have ways. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we grow up in the school listening a lot of chicory hair. Oh, all all the greatest. Mm-hmm. From here, so yeah, and music is 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 always um, trying new things. Always, yeah. always, yeah. And even a... if cars are still <laughs> a little old, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's like it's not just Chick Corea and Herbie Hancock. Yeah, it's now it's hip hop. You know, yeah, there's a, yeah, of a, a thriving scene there in, yeah. in Havana as well. Um, so uh, now, this this next piece you're going to play for us, 
Hialeah. Hmm. <laughs> is, does that refer to Hialeah, Florida? Yeah, definitely, definitely. The, you know, Miami, there is a lot of, a large community of Cuban of living there. And Hialeah is like a neighborhood in Miami where it's just like Cuba. There's so many Cuban living there. When I was there m the first time, I was really surprised. People playing Domino on the street, you know, uh -huh. all this. So I was trying to make some something for this amazing it, uh, connection. So it was also yeah. for many, for much of the 20th century, a historic horse racing track. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, and the reason people knew it was, you know, not just because of the horses that race there, but because of the fl the flamingos. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they had like flocks of flamingos who lived there uh, at yeah. the track. Uh, so, th so this piece yeah. is kind of a yeah, uh, an homage, yeah, to, an homage to that to, neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, to and to all the Cubans who live in Miami. That I have so many friends over there. I always feel very good when I go there. So, yeah, so all right. like a little Cuba. <laughs> let's uh, let's hear Harold uh, Lopez Nusa, his brother Rui behind the drum kit, and once again uh, Gaston Hoya playing the double bass. The piece is called Hialeah. <laughs>
Nicely done. That is uh, Harold Lopez Nusa and his trio with Hialeah. It's a song from his most recent CD called Un Dia Qualquiera, uh, a record that you made here in the States, right? Yes, in Boston. Yeah, that, that was a dream come true also. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so then uh, after, like right after we're done here, yes. you guys get on a plane, you fly out to the Midwest, yeah. then more concerts on the West Coast. Yeah. And then later... You have like a long resident, like a week-long residency. Is it in Tokyo? Yeah, we have like a week in in Japan, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So how big is Cuban? Have you been to Japan before? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it will be like... That would be like my fourth time. So oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, I know that, you know, there's been a long love affair in Japan for Brazilian music. Yes. Is there something like that with Cuban music? Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they, love, they love Cuban music, and they know a lot about Cuban music. And even they are, they are learning about Cuban music. There are some very good groups who play, like, Cuban orchestras. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. yeah. Oh, Movement. in Japan. In Japan, yeah, in Japan, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we you know we're beginning to see some of that here in in the states as well. I, I don't know if you've heard of Orchestra Akokan. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. we had we had them yeah. in here just a <laughs> couple of about two months ago. Yeah, yeah, they're great. Yeah, yeah. and many of those musicians are from Havana. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. The, those, those are my friends. I would think our so. Friends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it really is a community down there. That of the, course, all yeah. Mus- all the musicians they know each other. We share a lot of things. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Well, um, th- it's been great having this little part of the community here with thank us you. in our New York studio. <laughs> Harold, thank you so much. No, thanks to you. That was a pleasure. This is Soundcheck.